do with uh, and uh, we don't all know each other. And we Hello, I'm Munet Serafika. I'm with our office. The International Trade Center. The Australian Services Roundtable. From the Chartered yeah. Institute of Logistics in France. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Lawrence Chen. I'm chairman of Taiwan Coalition and Service Industry. The official stable, not as a senior official, but as a PEC representative, to establish a, a coalition of service organizations to write the last chapter of the, of the Bogor Goals for APEC. I'm just quickly going to introduce um, the fact that we have rapporteurs for this afternoon's meeting. The role of the rapporteurs is to try to distill the common elements in our discussion today. Uh, David Parsons will be acting as overall rapporteur for the afternoon session. And then we have um, Hendrik Raquel on my left and Bill Luz, who's currently in the structural uh, reform minister's meeting, but who will join us, uh, will act as session rapporteurs for our two main sessions. Now, before uh, turning to, to David to introduce uh, some background to our discussion today, I want to note that the organizations that have introduced themselves around the table have very different business models and very different kinds of memberships from each other. And there is no one perfect model for what we might call a services coalition. Clearly, some of the organizations around the table consist of um, companies in the services sector only and are standalone peak bodies for services. Some are general chambers of commerce in which a big chunk of the membership is in the services sector and some of those organizations have specific services committees or CSIs or bodies within them. Some are general chambers of commerce in their own right here. Some are um, organizations that have membership uh, that go beyond the corporate sector to include government parties and academics. Uh, some are um, more SME oriented than others that are more big end of town oriented. So we have quite a variety around the table. But I would just say that um, I don't think any of us uh, would regard those differences amongst um, the organizations as hindering our sharing of best practice in representing the views of the services business community. But I think Peter put it, Peter put it very succinctly this morning is that we're in a um, services revolution. And it's a services revolution that is embraced particularly the Asia Pacific region with its mix of developing and developed economies and it's part of the dynamism that's taking hold in this, um, in this uh, region. Um, in APEC and in ABAC, as you heard this morning, um, we want all economies to be part of this uh, services revolution, this new agenda. And, uh, and the Philippines, uh, I can say, proudly say, has um, put, brought all of this to the forefront uh, this year. It's bearing dividends, I hope, and working on what we've started in earlier times over a number of years. And in Indonesia, uh, the reason I'm involved, because in Indonesia, we started uh, a, a number of these initiatives, but particularly the interest in uh, developing business cooperation for the services sector. So the question really is, how well prepared are our organizations for this services revolution to, to, to capture this process? Now, um, over the last year, uh, we did a mapping study. I did a mapping study with, in cooperation with Jane and the ABAC members of the sort of services organizations, as we could broadly term them, across the APEC region. And we, we looked at you know, uh, some of the institutional structures, the governance structures, what, what kind of work was being done, uh, and, and so on, because we wanted to know how well prepared we were. And, you know, there's some very good work going on and there's some very strong activities going on in certain areas, particularly on the, on the trade front. 
Um, but frankly speaking, it was, it's very patchy. If you think of this big agenda, if you think of this ser uh, services revolution, we are not organisationally across this APEC region very well equipped to do that. We're not inclusive enough. We don't have all of the APEC economies involved in this process. Some, particularly those countries that economies that might need some help, the developing economies, are not uh, fully engaged or don't have the institutional structures. Uh, as Jane said, a lot of them are buried deeply within chambers and they don't get airtime. And if they do, they're not. The services issues are not considered strategically. They are considered. Uh, sectorally, and so we don't get that big strategic picture and, and defining those big uh, opportunities. Um, some of us are very reluctant, as you've heard this morning, to uh, embrace change. We want to stick fairly closely to the status quo, and I'll say a little bit more about that shortly. We're definitely not cooperating as a, re as a region very widely. We're cooperating on some trade issues, but others, others of us feel quite left out of that because some of us are not ready for the trade issues, but we're ready. We want to focus more on some of the uh, uh, business development ideas, some of the regulatory ideas, some of the innovation or human capacity builds ideas. So we haven't quite got a broad enough um, kind of big family agenda there to look at that reflects our business interests. And, um, and some, frankly, of us, and you know who they are, are not we might be services organisations in name, but we're not in practice. We don't. We 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 are very ad hoc. Uh, so we're, in that sense, we are not mobilised to focus on services on a, on a systematic basis and rise to this new agenda. Now, I might just um, say that. Uh, uh, well, what, what what is the result of some of this? I, I, let me go back to the idea about uh, protectionism and engagement and so on shortly, but. What are the consequences of this? I think the first consequence is that um, um, governments are getting very mixed messages on services. I mean, this happens obviously in negotiations, but even on domestic regulatory reform or on any issues, they're getting very mixed messages. Messages from those who don't see the big agenda, don't believe they can be part of the big new agenda, or those who just want to keep things as they are. Um, I don't think we're articulating a clear business voice, a strategic one across the region. I don't think we're taking up the opportunities and we're not pushing our government officials to work as uh, actively uh, as they could be. And we're not, and, and some of us are coming out of each economy and including my own uh, in Indonesia, as I would say, we, we, we need to give our government more confidence to act more robustly. So, and let me, I mean, I think having worked in business organisations in Indonesia for the last 15 years and in Asia Pacific cooperation organisations for the last 20, let me say I think there's no, you know, it is your responsibility to act in the interests of your membership. And, and that, that, is, that is the purpose of a business organisation. And I've worked in them and I've proudly worked in them. And, you know, yours is to define the business interest and to act in the business interest, in your in relations internationally or with governments and so on. But the proposition I would put to you is that those who think the business interest today is the status quo are going to be left behind, especially in services. So if you think the business interest is retaining what is there, however difficult change may be, and you know we know it's extremely difficult in services, the status quo will not we, 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 we really should think about this proposition, the status quo of retaining the status quo, lobbying for the status quo, is not in the business interest today. There's big opportunities out there, and what we in ABAC and APEC would like to see is how do we embrace those opportunities, how do more of us embrace those opportunities so that we can serve our business organisations in a new business in interest, and that is one that focuses on growth, responsiveness to the demand of consumers and users of services. A huge growth story, as we've heard there today. How do we prepare ourselves for that? How do we advocate for that change domestically and internationally and in, in the APEC region? So it's not just a simple question of protectionism or protecting our interests. We have to act in the interests of our business members. But the proposition should be that our interests now is, is a much more dynamic one. It's a fast changing one. And you know, the train is leaving the station and if we're still sitting on this station and haven't bought a ticket in many of our APEC economies, 
is going to be, you're going to get left out. And that, I might say, is one of the reasons that motivated us in Indonesia, which on any measure of this OECD and so on, uh, you know, shows a lot of restrictiveness. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud to say that, uh, as representing Indonesia, that the Indonesian Services Dialogue, which we started a number of years ago in a sort of slow, step-by-step -step form, under Sinta's leadership, has become, I would say, probably the most active services organisation um, in APEC. And Sinta maybe introduced that to you, but I think, you know, it shows what can be done. So, you know, how can we, what, what will cooperation bring to us? And I think we would, we really need to have that embodied in any MOU that we talk about today and in our work. But, you know, the idea is to cooperate over that bigger agenda, not just a trade agenda, but one of innovation, one of human capacity building, one of regulation, one of getting growth and efficiency underway. And it, 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 it go, it, the idea is that we talk to each other. We talk to each other about what our aspirations are. We talk to each other about how we operate in our own economies. We, talk to, we, 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 we help each other identify business opportunities bilaterally in the trade process. So we're not just sitting in Geneva negotiating a, an agreement, but we're actually practically out there saying, you know, I, I can help your delegation coming from somewhere and we can introduce you to the players. We can share ideas on how to make our, uh, our, our organisations really um, dynamic and, and having some re real sense of membership and, and finances and so on. There are a lot of really good stories out there so that we don't have to just have Marabund organisations that are buried somewhere or committees. We can have real ones and I, I think we can share those issues. I think we can help identify where the emerging issues are coming from and how do we prepare for that so we're not just going to be left behind but how can we anticipate where those changes are and then and get our domestic constituency and business attuned to these ch changes that we need to make so that we, uh, we, 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 people are not just putting it in the too hard basket. We, so we have to be aspirational and we have to be able to, to, uh, to, to, to uh, be thinking ahead for our business organisations. Um, and I think we, we have a very good opportunity in APEC uh, to talk to uh, our officials informally or informally, domestically or regionally, and share our ideas in a dialogue. We don't have to put uh, usually formal ideas on the table, but we can comment, we can give feedback, we can provide impetus to the whole process that's going on there. And rather than being nervous and reactionary and sitting for the status quo, let's think about how we can provide solutions. And, uh, and, you know, this, this, if we do develop this regional organisation, we have an avenue to discuss common views, so we're putting them forward. So there are less mixed messages uh, going, uh, going into the, the government process. Now, I think that from my long experience in APEC, I would have to say that, you know, and seeing how APEC started um, in the very earliest days, I think while we should have ambition, we should be mindful of our capacity. I think we've got to be inclusive. We've got, to, you know, we, we can't try to, we're not negotiating anything. We, have, we can't just grab an agenda and run with it. We have to be informal, understand each other so that we actually are inclusive and bring the whole family of, uh, of our economies together. This is an informal, very, very informal process so that we can generate ideas with confidence. We don't have to be uh, nervous about uh, how we put ideas on the table. At the moment, nothing is being taken down in terms of correspondence. So, you know, the idea is to, to start off cooperating in the real sense of the word as business people might do so and just take it step by step. I mean, you need some leadership and need some, uh, some secretarial support, but I would think it's important to build on what is there already. We have, for example, uh, in China, the biggest trade fair uh, services trade fair in, I think, the world. Why, why don't we leverage on that? I think that's an excellent idea. We have the Global Services Summit in Washington. Let's leverage on, on, on that uh, activity. We have APEC, so we hope that the, the chair of, uh, the chair as it rotates every year can help in, the, in this organisation, could provide a leadership role in cooperation with ABAC and the APEC senior officials so that we, we hope that Peru, for example, would be a champion for some of these ideas in the coming year. And I know that in Peru you've been 
very dynamic in reforming the services sector. So we hope that that could be uh, part of the exercise. And I think if there are people who want to help convene and there's huge resources there, we should embrace those issues. Um, and we, we've seen from Jane, uh, from the ITC, Christopher, these are probably some of the leading services experts in, um, in, the, in the region. We should be tapping that in the PEC process. Um, and finally, um, uh, I think, let me, where's my last notes? <laughs> Sorry, I've got, um, um, finally, I think we, we in terms of, we, I think we're very fortunate to have our European friends here. You know, I don't, I, I don't think we should be hung up on whether we call ourselves an APEC coalition or an Asia Pacific coalition. We, we don't want to be in a formal body. We want to be a little bit more nimble and flexible than that. I hope we can be. And I hope that, you know, if there are economies out there who are engaging with, our, with us in services, trade and investment, that they can be around the table. I'm not sure that we need to get hung up particularly on whether someone's be ready to be a member or an observer or just wants to sit at the table. Let's be open to, to these kinds of issues so that when we can grow in, in, in time and be, be confident with each other. The purpose is not the formal part of the organisational structure. The point is to start talking and sharing around the table on, on, and being very inclusive about that. And there are some of us who are not here. I think about five or five economies that are not here. Let's be active in bringing the, the... They're not here because they particularly are against anything. They're not here because they couldn't get things organised to be here. And let's be aspirational. Let's try and bring all our APEC economies in um, into the process. And, and over the next few months, I think we should be working hard to do that. So today, I, I hope, my dream, you know, and I'm, I'm the old granddaddy that's about to go out the door, so, but my, my dream for, for this is for, for you to declare today that you are going to work together in some organisational process, you know, that because we have a bigger goal here, that, you know, I don't think we need to be hung up on the words and all the, on the membership, but we actually get with the spirit of this uh, I mean, some of you will have ideas on all of this, and this will come out in the discussion. But I hope that from today, we can capture the energy that we saw there this morning, that we can add much greater vitality to it, and that we can go out there and start something quite, quite dynamic. And we can say that on the 7th of September in Cebu, that we made you know, the start of something big here. So that's, that's my aspiration. Thank you, David.